Well, yeah. the title of the message, and I'm going to be uh, doing the teaching tonight, uh, is healing is the children's bread. And as we think about eating uh, the bread of Jesus, uh, I want you to think about those things that you want to uh, get rid of in your mind and in your body and 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 those things that you want uh, no part of. And uh, because we are going to be talking about this bread tonight, which brings healing and deliverance to us. Uh, we say welcome to Jen tonight. Hello. Welcome. Hallelujah. Um, the title of the message is Healing is the Children's Bread. Uh, I want to start in Matthew chapter 16, uh, excuse me, chapter 15, where a woman from Canaan comes where Jesus is passing through. And, uh, and she says, have mercy on me, O Lord. I'm in uh, verse 22 of Matthew 15. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. You know, when Jesus went through uh, the villages and the cities, then he would uh, bring people uh, uh, into the light and he would bring healing to their bodies and he would cast out devils and he would raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. And so as he was passing through, people would, would come to him because they knew that they could receive something from him. And tonight, Whatever we need from him is available to us. If we need peace, if we need hope, if we need joy, if we need deliverance, if we need healing, whatever it might be, it's here tonight in the name of Jesus. So in verse 23, but he answered her. He, he didn't say a word to her. And his disciples came and said, send her away. You know, she's not part of our group. She's not part of our church group. Uh, just, just send her away. Send her away. You know, and, and I faced many of those types of individuals uh, as we opened up the mission downtown Athens and as we went on the streets uh, to minister to the prostitutes and the pimps and the drug addicts and the and the alcoholics and those that had mental disorders, uh, we faced uh, this type of criticism and this type of prejudice. You know, just send them away. Just get rid of those, those, those individuals that need help. And so this is what his, their, his disciples were saying. Send her away, for she crieth after us. You know, she's just making a scene. But in verse twenty. 24 but he answered and said i am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of israel this is what jesus said then came she and worshiped him saying lord help me she knew exactly how to get his attention and that has not changed when we worship him when we praise him, then he will come and be with us. He will inhabit us. He will just come and, and, and touch our bodies and touch our minds. And, and I, I know that's what he, what he did for me today. Uh, you know, if we turn over to Psalm 100, this is something that um, I, another person and I were talking about this morning psalm 100 make a joyful noise unto the lord all ye lands serve the lord with gladness come before his presence with singing hallelujah hallelujah and in in the passion translation it talks about worship here and it talks about the presence of god being so real when we begin to worship him and praise him so she she entered in 
if you will. She entered in, even though she was not uh, a Jew, she was not uh, um, an Israelite, she still entered in. And it says here, and it, uh, she came and worshiped him. But in 26, but he answered and said, if it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. See, he's, he heard what she said. She says, my daughter has a demon, has a devil. She's messed up. And I need your help. And Jesus said, healing is the, is the, but the bread for the children, the children. And she said, true Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said, O oh woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you, even as you have, as you will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She entered in with worship. She got his attention, hallelujah. And he came in, you know, he, he was there and he said, it shall be because of your faith. Because of your faith, this is going to happen. And whatever you need to happen in your life tonight, uh, whether it's in your family, in your finances, in your spiritual life, in your mind, whatever it is, it's going to come through faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so she began to eat of this bread, you know, and it says that Jesus is the bread of life. That's what it says in, in John 6, 48. And I'm going to go to the book of John in just a few moments because we're talking about the bread. Tonight, we're talking about healing is the bread of the children. And that's us. Hallelujah. I can have healing in my body tonight. I can have healing in my mind tonight. I don't have to be depressed anymore. I don't have to go into the pit anymore. I can be totally delivered by faith and believing that Jesus is the bread of life. Hallelujah. But before I do that, I want to turn to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is talking about Jesus Christ. And, and we, we sing a little verse. We, you know, we love to sing. We love to sing the word. And as we traveled uh, 45 minutes one way for 11 years to hear the word of God, to get trained in the ministry, if you will, 45 minutes one way. And we did that. We, on Sunday, we made a round trip. And on uh, we went Tuesday nights. And we did that for 11 years. Hallelujah. Until the Lord released us. But we sing. We sang the scriptures. We sang the Psalms. And this one right here, Isaiah 53. We're going to sing it. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. For our iniquities, surely he bore my sorrows, and by his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's Isaiah 53, uh, starting in verse 3. He was rejected. He was despised. He was bruised. He was wounded. Hallelujah but he still was the bread of life. He still was the bread of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you have something you wanted to say? Thank you, Jesus. I want to go to, to uh, in 1 Peter 2.24. We won't turn there, but it says that by his stripes, we are healed. See, Jesus was wounded for us so that we don't have to go through cancer. That we don't have to go through diabetes. We don't have to go through arthritis. We don't have to go through any type of disorder. 
whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, we don't have to do that. We don't have to go through it. If we go through it, then that's of our own accord because Jesus is calling us out of oppression. He's calling us out of depression. He's calling us out of the pit. I don't know how many times he has brought me out of the pit and he has put my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. That is the word. Praise the name of Jesus. So as I was thinking on this and meditating on this, I said, Lord, you're, you're the bread of life. That's what you said. You are the bread of life and we are to eat of you. And so there's three things I want you to think about tonight and take with you tonight. Three golden nuggets. Three golden nuggets that I want you to take with you and I want you to think on it and I want you to meditate on it and I want you to receive it by faith tonight in Jesus name. In Jesus' name. And number one is that we're going to eat the word. We're going to eat it. We're going to eat the bread of life. We're going to digest it. Number two, what does that mean? We're going to meditate on it. We're going to make it real. And we're going to, we're going to make it part of us. Healing is part of us. It's part of Brother Fred. It's part of me. Why? Because it's my bread. It's what I eat on. Hallelujah. I eat on the word of God. So we're going to eat it. We're going to digest it. And we're going to do it. Now that's where faith comes in. Faith worketh by love. But we're going to, we're going to, to do these three things. And I'm going to say it one more time. We're going to eat the word. We're going to digest the word. And we're going to do the word. Hallelujah. And when I say do the word, that means that that bread is working in us. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, it's making me healthy today. It's making me prosperous today. It's giving me peace today. Because I'm eating. I'm eating it. You know, it says in Psalms 34, 8, to taste of the Lord and see that he is good. You know, the children of Israel ate manna from heaven. And, and Jesus talks about this. Let's go to the book of John. Lord, we thank you for this word. I thank you being the bread of life Amen. that we can eat, that we can digest, and that we can do the word. Hallelujah. I'm in, in, in chapter six, you know, and it says here, um, uh, I'm going to start in 26. Uh, I'll get down to, uh, I'll get down to 48 where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Um, but I want to start in 26 and it says, Jesus answered and said, verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Number 27, verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for he hath God the Father sealed. Then said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God now, here is where, remember the little woman in Matthew 15, she came to Jesus. She had no covenant with him. She had no uh, right uh, to come to him, but she came and she received from him. And he said, oh, woman, your faith is great. You're receiving from me out of your faith. Hallelujah. And so listen, he says, what, what, what can we do to do the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him, which he has sent. If you believe in Jesus Christ tonight, you can eat of this bread that we're talking about tonight. You can eat of the bread of life and healing is there. It's for you. 
It is part of the blood covenant. Hallelujah. Do you see that we have more than the woman in Matthew 15? The, and and she, by her faith, she came to Jesus and her daughter was delivered of an evil spirit. But do you see that we have more than this woman in Matthew 15 tonight? We are his covenant children. Hallelujah. We have cut covenant with Jesus. The blood of Jesus has been mingled with our blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we go on down, it talks, he talks about um, verse 31. Our father did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, this was that back when they were wandering in the wilderness. God was still there. He was still taking care of them. And he was still providing for them. And even in the wilderness, God is there. Woo, hallelujah. I don't know if that spoke to you, but that spoke to me. Even in a wilderness situation, God is still there. And he brought manna from heaven, bread from heaven, he sent to them. Woo, hallelujah. And then if we read on, then Jesus sent it to them. Verily, verily, I say to you, Moses gave you not that bread. You see, man can't help you. Man cannot help you. God can help you. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Because men, women, boys, and girls, they may fail you. They may not do the right thing. But God always knows what to do. He knows what we need. And he knew here that the children needed bread. Hallelujah. It says, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. In verse 33, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Hallelujah. Now that's Jesus. That's a picture of Jesus right there. That's a picture of his healing right there. God sent him into the world to be the bread of life and to bring healing to all of us who are children of God. Hallelujah. And I pray tonight that you will receive that healing in your minds, in your bodies, in your, in your family situation, whatever you need it for. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Then say, I'm in verse 34. Then said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am, I am the bread of life. The word of God is the bread of life. And every time you begin to eat and taste of the Lord, you're going to see, number one, that he's good. Number two, in First Peter, it says that he's gracious. He's gracious to you. He's going to give you the grace you need uh, to, to go through any situation, to go through the day. He's going to give you the grace to go through. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Remember the three things, the three nuggets for tonight that we're going to gobble up, hallelujah, and that is we're going to eat the bread, we're going to digest the bread, and we're going to do, do what the, the word of God tells us to do. Those three things. And as we eat, we're going to see that he's good. And as we digest the word, what does that mean? Joshua 1, 8, he, Joshua was told to think on the word. Think on the word. You know, recently I did a women's uh, conference and, and I had them little tiny pumpkin, pumpkins, real pumpkins. And I had uh, them to write on that pumpkin a word uh, that they wanted to remember from, from the spirit of God. And then they were to put it somewhere in their house, in their kitchen, in their refrigerator, in their bathroom where they put on their makeup, in their office. Uh, but they were to place that little pumpkin somewhere where they could think on it all the time. 
And the word that I put on my little pumpkin, which is in my kitchen, on the windowsill, and I look out that window many times during the day, the word that I wrote was abundance. Because the Lord has placed in me a knowing that he has brought me abundance. Abundance in every area of my life. Abundance with my husband, abundance with my family, abundance in our finances, abundance in my, in my body, abundance. He has come to bring me abundant life. Hallelujah. And so many times during the day, I look at that little pumpkin and, and I see that word and I begin to think on the abundance of God. I begin to meditate. I begin to digest the word of God. You know what digest means? It means that there's a flowing, a flowing through your mind, a flowing through your spirit, a flowing in your muscles, a flowing in your nerves, a flowing in your stomach area, a, flow, a flowing in your, in your joints. Uh, there's a flowing. That's when, when you... That word digest means that it's flowing all together, all together. And that's what we do when we meditate on the, on the word of God. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now, these are the words of Jesus. These are written in red in my Bible, but I say unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no way cast aside. For I come down from heaven. Woo! Jesus is saying, hey, listen, guys, I was sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he said, somebody needs to go because there's no intercessor down there. There's no deliverer down there. And Jesus says, hey, I'll go. He says, I came. Hallelujah. I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which is given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that, that means the Father, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Hallelujah. That's us. That's every one of us because we are believers. That, that, is, that is our promise right there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now let's go on down because Jesus says in, in verse 48, again, that he is the bread of life. It says in verse 44, no man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him and I will raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, has heard and has learned of the Father cometh unto me. Now, let's go on down to 48. Jesus says again, I am that bread of life. So the word of God, again, we're talking about eating the word and tasting that he's good and, and digesting it and doing it. Hallelujah. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness, but they're dead. If you eat the natural things, if you take hold of religious doctrine, it will kill you. I guarantee you. You say, well, how can you say that? Because it says, that the law killeth, but the spirit maketh alive. And you see, this bread from heaven is a spiritual thing. 
And that's why when we take communion and we recognize the body of Christ, we recognize it as a spiritual thing. It is something that's going on in the inside of me. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is in me. The bread of life is in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread, which man, which, whoo, which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Hallelujah. You know, I've had people come and say, well, you know, what about death? And I said, well, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to die because he lives. Hallelujah. I can live. Yes, Hallelujah. Now this, this body this earth suit may lay down, but I will never die. And if you know Jesus, you will never die. Hallelujah. Because you're eating the bread. Yes, amen. Woo! Glory. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give to my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Hallelujah. Now, if we go on down to verse 56, and this is another thing that we say as we're taking communion. It says, he that eateth of my flesh, that's the word of God, and drinketh of my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in Hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. And so as I was meditating on this message and saying, Lord, I want I want a freshness to come. I want fresh manna uh, for all of you tonight. And he said, it's all about the connection. It's all about connecting with Jesus. And we do not connect to Jesus with our intellect, with our carnal mind, because it's enemy to God. Is it okay to read books? Of course it is. Of course it is, but we don't live by those books. We live by the bread of life, which is the word of God. The word of God is our standard. Hallelujah. If there's any disagreement in anything that I read or I hear, I always go back to the word of God. And the word is my standard. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, it goes into the fire. If it's something that I can receive and move with and, and glorify God with, then I will receive it. But if it's not, then I cast it out. He says, if you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you will have eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood dwelleth in me, and I dwell in him. I said it's all about connecting. If you want to eat the bread of life and you want healing that comes as your bread, then you have to connect with the Lord. And the only way we do that is through the Holy Spirit. And I know people probably get very, very uh, aggravated with me about pushing the Holy Ghost. But let me tell you something. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not connect. There's no connection without the Holy Spirit. Because as we connect with him, that's when we, when, that's when we eat the bread and we we see goodness and we see grace and we see healing and we see prosperity and we see joy unspeakable and full of glory if whatever it is that we need we receive out of that connection this is what he says right here i'm going to dwell in you and you're going to dwell in me that is a connection people that is an intimacy with the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, there are some individuals that marry 
but their marriage is never consummated. Their marriage is never brought to an intimate uh, time. And that's easy to annul. That's easy to get rid of. But once you connect with Jesus, and by eating the word of God, by eating the bread, hallelujah, then healing just comes on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing comes. There's two of you. You've had pain in your neck. You've had headaches. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing right now. Eat of the bread. Hallelujah. Eat of the bread that says in 1 Peter 2, 24, that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Amen. That is bread. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Eat of the bread. And you will connect with him. Digest it. Let it flow through you. Think on it. Meditate on it. Oh, yes, Lord. I need finances. Well, then get into the word of God about how when you give, it's going to be given back to you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. And running over. Read those scriptures on prosperity. It gives God delight when, when you prosper. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. And it's God that teaches you how to get well. Yes, Hallelujah. Not your mind. Amen. Not how many courses you've had in college. Not how many books you've read. It's God. Hallelujah. That gives you the power to get well. Woo. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Brother Fred has PhD. He is a distinguished professor of agricultural economics. He's won all these different awards, hallelujah, through his career. I have a master's degree. I have, I had my own business for 40 years. I prospered, hallelujah. But we count it all dung, hallelujah. Just to know about God's healing. Just to know about God's salvation. Just to know that God is the God that is faithful. Hallelujah. That raised up our daughter when the doctor said she's going to die. When raised me up. Hallelujah. When three uh, specialists said you have a terminal cancer and you will only live for six months. But God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> he is my bread. Healing is the bread of the children. Yes, amen. It's for you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. It's for every one of you. It's for your family. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, George and Joy, I say this to you, and, and I say it out of the abundance of my heart, that we give thanks for your family, and we give thanks uh, for what you have uh the Lord has brought you through and we give thanks unto the Lord for raising up your family and uh, hallelujah. Uh, we, we give thanks for that. And I know that Sophia may not, she's not, I don't see her face anymore, but I give thanks almost every day uh, for your husband's kidneys. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, that they begin to work and they begin to function. Hallelujah. Amen. I give thanks for Lucy and for her for her child that's on the inside of her uh, that's, that's going to be uh, healthy and normal and a blessing uh, to that family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord has done so many good things yes. for us. Amen. And to receive the healing in the bread, we must connect with him. We must let him dwell in us and we dwell in him. Amen. 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 And it says we do the works of God because we believe yes. in what Jesus Christ did for us. We believe that he gave his body for us on the cross. Amen. You know, just look at that body. That body was bruised and wounded and the blood ran out of his back and the blood ran down his face uh, from the crown of thorns. 
Hallelujah. What does that crown of thorns uh, say to you? It says that I don't have to be anxious about anything. I don't have to go through anxiety. I don't have to go through panic attacks. I don't have to go through depression anymore. I don't have to go through suicide anymore. Hallelujah. Because I believe in that body. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. And the piercing of his side. Do you know what that was all about? He made an entrance for us. That means that we can go to the throne of grace anytime. We don't need a priest. We don't need a father. We don't need a uh, some type of cardinal. We don't need any. Uh, we don't need um, Mary to go ahead of us. We can go into the throne room. Hallelujah. He made an access. Well, that was in his body. Do you think about his body? And when you think about his body, think about he did it all for you. Hallelujah. He did everything he did. He Thank did you. it for you and me and the whole world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the bread of life. Yes, amen. And we eat it every day. Amen. And we meditate. Remember the three nuggets. We're going to eat the word. We're going to digest the word. Some of you are eating the word and you're spitting it back up. Now, if that's you, you can repent. <laughs> And say, Lord, I want to digest yes, it. Amen. I want it to become part of me. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. I want to connect with you today. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name, we're going to eat it. We're going to digest it. We're going to meditate on it. And we're going to do it. James 1.22 says, be a doer of the word yes. and not a hearer only. Amen. Oh, well, I heard a wonderful sermon and it got me so excited. And then you go home and you sleep and you get up the next morning and you go about your normal activities. No, 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 no. We're not, we're gonna, not going to do that anymore. Because when we hear the word, we're going to be a doer of the word. Amen. We're going to love our enemies. And we're going to love those who persecute us and say evil things about us. And we're going to we're going to receive the grace of God today. Amen. That amazing grace. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to receive his faithfulness to us. You know, 